The Tri-X Panorama SE is one of the coolest looking coolers on the market, and the best part is, it's one of the easiest coolers to install ever, but if you need help, I'm here to lend a helping hand. So let's show you how to install it. But before that, just to make your life easier, there are chapters in this video just so you can jump to a part if you're not sure about a certain part of the installation guide. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review. It's not about performance or price or anything like that. It's purely to help you if you need it because every system, every motherboard, every case, fan placement and setup is different. But this will give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Tri-X Panorama SE in both AMD and Intel based systems. If you're building and you're not sure if it will fit in your case, we've got hundreds of case reviews here on the channel. So check those out. There'll be a playlist link to that in the description. Lastly, make sure you watch the entire video before asking any questions because I usually answer them in the video, but let's answer some of those inevitable questions right now. The case used is the Leon Lee Lancol 2 on 6. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration and the ease of filming purposes only, that's all. The motherboard shown are the Gigabyte X870 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 and the Ryzen 7 7700X, as well as the ASUS Tough Gaming Z890 Pro Wi-Fi with an Intel Core Ultra 285K. This is not a review, so we're not talking about performance. I think I mentioned that already. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. The fans are pre-installed on the radiator, so you can swap them out or rotate them or change them if you like. Every case is different, so clearances in your case may differ. Yes, these fans do have RGB. You will need to use your motherboard RGB software or a controller to change the colors. The Canali software does not allow you to change the fan colors at all. Yes, you can also put whatever fans you like on this cooler. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included in the box, except for all of this PC hardware. Yes, there is thermal paste included, but it's also pre-applied. So if you need to reinstall the cooler later, it comes with spare thermal paste. Yes, it will work with almost every single motherboard, CPU, and basically every combo you're gonna ask for from now until the foreseeable future. No, you don't have to fill this cooler up with water. It's already in there. You don't need to top it up. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to maintain it. It's a closed <laughs> system. <laughs> Let's see what's in the box and how to install it. That sounds so cool. All right, here's the Tri-X Panorama SE 360 ARGB. Let's open the box to see what we get here. Ooh, what's that? A user manual? Something that we're not gonna use? Get in the bin, get out of here. There's a box with all of the mounting gear and all of the accessories and cables you'll need to install this cooler. There's an adjustable Intel backplate. We've also got the pump top itself with the pre-installed thermal paste and the pre-installed mounting bracket, as well as that awesome removable OLED screen, which is magnetic, doesn't physically attach with any cables other than the cables that are on the pump top itself. And finally, the radiator with three pre-installed fans. It does come this way out of the box. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's do Intel installation. This is all very easy. You want to locate this mounting bracket. Each corner has an adjustable bolt and the way you move this bolt is just by grabbing it and sliding it. It does have rubber inside of it that does help keep it in place. And the way I recommend doing this is if the motherboard is outside of your case, placing the backplate on a flat surface, then picking up your motherboard and slowly lowering it over the bolts and putting it through the holes on the board. And that's just how easy it is to install this backplate on an Intel motherboard. As for AMD motherboards, it is slightly different. We need to remove the factory mounting hardware. There's two plastic brackets, one at the top and one at the bottom. And what we're going to do here is remove four screws to remove those brackets. Now, do not get rid of these screws. Do not get rid of the brackets. Keep the brackets just in case you need them later, but the screws, we need them to install the brackets that go on the motherboard. Next, you'll want to locate two of these brackets here. They're in the bags labeled AM4 slash AM5 mounting. You'll notice there are little labels on these brackets with an arrow with the word CPU on them. What this means is this edge needs to face the CPU. What you're wanting to do is get the factory mounting screws that you just removed from the factory mounting hardware, place the bracket over the standoff pegs on the motherboard itself. You'll notice the top bracket here is upside down with the word CPU being upside down to the way that you look at the board. 
and then you want to fasten in the factory screws to hold the Tri-X mounting brackets in place and then rinse and repeat that process until you've installed all four screws and both brackets on the top and bottom of the socket. And that's it, AMD mounting bracket is installed just like that. These next steps are the same for both Intel and AMD installations. The only difference here is the mounting hardware, which I just showed you how to install for either. Choosing the right place to install your radiator is dependent on the case. For the Landcool 216, I would recommend installing a 360 millimeter liquid cooler at the top of the case as shown by my chubby fingers and my screwdriver that I always use for pointing. What you're wanting to do then is remove the screen. It's a magnetic screen. There's nothing physically attaching it other than magnets. How do they work? Nobody really knows. And after you've removed that screen, you want to locate this cable. This is just gonna make it a bit easier for cable management and plugging things in. What you're then wanting to do is locate the larger end, which is a single connector, and you're wanting to plug the connector that corresponds with that from the fans itself that are already pre-installed on the radiator, plug them in and clip them into place. It'll make a nice little clipping sound when you do this. Now, I would recommend feeding this end of the cables, which is a PWM connector and two RGB connectors, feed that through to the back side of your case. This makes cable management nicer and it makes it easy to install your radiator. We'll come back to these in a moment and I'll show you exactly what you want to do with them. Locate 12 of these screws. These are the mounting screws to mount the radiator to the case itself. Depending on the case, it can be different to install the radiator. This case actually has a removable top, but to show you, you can maneuver this radiator to fit in without removing the top bracket. Typically, I recommend with 360 mil liquid coolers to fasten up one of the center screws. As you're about to see, when you do that, it holds the radiator in place. Don't fully tighten it because you want to keep them loose so you can make small micro adjustments later just in case you're not quite happy with the radiator placement. Now rinse and repeat that process until all 12 screws are installed but not fully tightened and then we'll make some slight adjustments showing you why you would do this. So essentially if your radiator is too far forward or too far backwards depending on your case you should have a little bit of wiggle room. I prefer having it a bit closer to the front. Once you've got that in place fasten them up and we should be good to go. Now locate this cable that we passed through previously. This is a three pin five volt addressable RGB cable. Locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard and then plug that cable in. This will make the fans light up. On the same cable, there will be a PWM fan cable. Locate that. Then you want to take a look at your motherboard and locate a header, which will be labeled something like CPU fan. It will be different depending on the board and then you want to plug that cable into that header on your motherboard. So now your fans will both light up and spin, which is the objective of all of this. You'll want to locate four of these nuts. Sorry, I mean these nuts. And you'll want to locate four of these springs. Now I want to show you guys a little bit of an example. This is what it looks like without the cooler mounting. And you'll see each of the bolts has a spring seat. Now. Pay close attention. If you don't align it properly, it will hit the edge of the spring seat. What you want to do is have that spring sitting in the spring seat. It's a little bit different when the height of the cooler and the bracket itself is taken into account. But I just wanted to show you this because I have seen people come across this being a bit of an issue for coolers like this. Next, remove the plastic protective cover from the bottom of the cold plate for the cooler. This will expose the pre-applied thermal paste. You'll then want to lower that onto the bolts that we installed previously in the mounting section. This is the same for both AMD and Intel. You'll then want to locate all of those springs and then you'll want to lower the springs onto those bolts and then you'll want to get the nuts and put the nuts over the spring, making sure it feeds into the spring seat and then just finger tighten them to make sure you've got all four installed, 
Now, the way I recommend doing this is not doing them in left to right or up and down, but rather in a diagonal pattern. It just helps with mounting pressure and it makes it easier to get the screws and the springs physically installed. Then once they're in, you'll want to tighten them up. Don't do them up all the way. Just do them so they grab the thread nicely and do them diagonally. And then once they're all semi tightened then whiz them up all the way until they're tight, but don't over tighten them because if you ever need to take it off, you're gonna be in for a very bad time. Never over tighten anything. You'll notice there is a cable coming off the pump top itself. This is to control the pump and give the pump power. You'll then want to locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU op or AIO pump or something similar to that. It depends on your motherboard, but essentially this is to send power to the pump. Then you want to plug that cable into that header. On a gigabyte board, it's typically CPU opt and we should be good to go. On the OLED screen, you will see four pegs that will help with aligning the screen itself onto the pump top. And on the pump top, there are four holes which will give you an idea of which way you want to orient the screen. Now, it can go in almost any orientation you like. And essentially what you wanna do is line it up with those holes make sure the pegs go into those holes and the magnet should hold the screen in place. I did it in this orientation because I kind of like this look. Locate the USB cable that comes off the screen. You'll then want to feed that through the back side of your case, probably through some of the pass-through holes at the top of your motherboard tray. And then you'll want to pick that up at the bottom. Then you'll want to locate a USB header on your motherboard, typically labeled something like this, like USB, and plug that USB cable in and it should only plug in one way. And that's it for installation and wiring. Now that the hardware side is taken care of, there is a software side for this cooler. You'll want to go to the Triax website and download their software called Canali. This will allow you to use all of the software control. You'll be able to configure the screen and basically do everything other than change the color of the fans. Once everything is done and we're on the home page here, you'll click the Panorama SE tab and it will allow us to do a bit of customization. Now, for the demo, you can see that the orientation of the screen isn't optimal, but this is just giving you a bit of an idea of how it works. There's a bunch of presets. We'll just click through them and you'll see them apply in real time. There's lots of really cool presets here. Uh, I, I kind of like this one. I have used this one before with builds, but obviously the rotation is quite strange, but you get the idea because you can see it on the video as well as the screen capture. Yeah, these demos are actually all pretty cool. For the orientation of this cooler though, I think the waterfall is probably the best one because it shows the water running down the front of the cooler. I think that just looks really cool. As well as that, you can add CPU temperatures, you can change the rotation of stuff here, you can do CPU frequency. Essentially, anything you think you can do with a cooler like this, you can do. But one of the cooler things is screen recording. You can capture a section of a screen of a video. Just say you're on YouTube. Maybe there's a certain YouTube channel that you watch that you may want to put some video on your screen for your cooler. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. As well as that, you can do full customization too. So it's not just the presets. Uh, you can basically just upload almost anything you like. So. I don't have anything to show you in particular, but you name it, there's a bunch of file formats that will probably work. So you can basically put anything that you want on it. And if it all worked out, it should look a little something like this. If this video helped you, let us know in the comments down below and like and subscribe and all that jazz. And if you're wondering why I made this video in the first place, well, this channel started off by making guides to help people who needed the help. And I like this cooler, so I thought it would be nice to help people who are maybe struggling or having some trouble installing this new Triax cooler. If there's a cooler you guys want to see us do a guide on, just, yeah, let us know in the comments, but chances are we've probably done one or maybe not. Just let us know if there's anything, I don't know. How does this work in algorithm, algorithm, algorithm?